Hello, in this presentation, I'm going to discuss the fundamental of binomial distribution. Once the fundamental of the distribution uh, is uh, mastered, any question related to binomial distribution can be easily answered. So the first question is, what is a binomial distribution? Well, binomial distribution is a discrete probability distribution. Let me give you an example of a discrete distribution. Let's say you have a box consist of cards, and there are numbers written on these cards. One, two, three, four. These are the numbers written on the card. So if you draw a card, that number could be one, two, three, four, right? Those numbers are countable. That means one is distinct from two, two is distinct from three, three is distinct from four. Okay, and these are the corresponding percentages of the power of the of the cards. That means 25% of the card has number one written on it, 35% of the card has number two written on it, and so on. This distribution, this variable x can take discrete values. One, two, three, four. That's why it's called discrete um, variable, and the probability is called the discrete probability distribution. Since I'm on this topic. Let me make a distinction between the discrete and the continuous uh, variable. In this case, x can take any value between 4 and 0 with density function 0.25. So in this case, x is a continuous variable because there is no gap among the values of that x can take. Okay, going back to the discrete distribution, these two probability conditions must satisfy in case of any discrete probability distribution. That means total probability must be equal to one, and each of the probability must be greater than or equal to zero. Now, when can we apply the binomial distribution? Binomial distribution can only be applied when these four conditions satisfy. For example, you must have a fixed number of trial cases or events. Let me give you an example with this. You are tossing a coin. You cannot toss a coin forever. You have to toss a coin for a fixed number of um, times. And that each time you toss a coin may be considered as a trial, case, or event. Each trial, case, event can only have two possible outcomes. So when you toss a coin, the outcome is either head or a tail, right? There are only two fixed. The probability of each outcome is fixed, that means the coin, if the coin is a fair coin, each time you toss the coin, the probability of showing the head remains unchanged. It is 0.5. And the trial case and events are independent of each other. That means they don't depend on each other. When you're tossing a coin, for example, your first toss and the second toss has nothing to do with each other. They are not dependent on each other. When those four conditions satisfy in any situation, you can construct a binomial distribution by using this formula. Now, this formula looks very complicated, but it is not. I'm going to show you in a second by using an Excel page how you can compute this formula. So let me describe what I'm um, uh, planning to uh, compute the probabilities on. Here, I have tossed a coin for 10 times, and I'm interested in finding out the number of heads that it shows. It could be zero. That is, it is possible that in 10 of the tosses, number of head did not show up at all. It's improbable, but it can still happen with a very low probability. So you can compute all of this probability. In this case, head shows up two times, head shows up three times, and in this case, head showed up 10 times, okay? So the probability is, by using this formula, I'm going to use Excel built-in function, which is equal to B-I-N-O-M-D-I-S-T, and then I'm going to put the cell reference zero. So I'm going to give the other cell reference zero, comma, number of times is 10, comma, probability of head is 0.5, comma, F-A-L-S-E, false. False means I'm not looking for the cumulative probabilities, I'm looking for the individual event. So in this case, out of 10 tosses, none of the, none of the times head will show up is, is, uh, is uh, 0 0.00977, okay? And I can drag and drop to compute all of those probabilities. Now these are calculated. Now how do I know this is a distribution? If I add, clicking on this summation sign, it must be equal to one. Yes, it is a probability distribution. Now probability distribution, you can compute the mean of the probability distribution, any probability distribution by using this formula. So equal to, equal to P times X, enter, and now drag and drop, drag and drop, so the calculations are done. Now I add by using the summation sign, enter. So the mean is five. What about the variance? Equal to P 
times p times x minus 5 square okay now I have done the first component of the variance for rest of the components I drag and drop it is done now I can do the sum because I need to do the sum here the sum so 2.5 okay this is a traditional way of computing the mean and variance of any probability distribution however in case of the binomial distribution there is a shortcut you can use this formula ex is called the expected value of the distribution which is also the mean of the probability distribution n times p and p is 0.5 n is 10 0.5 times 10 is equal to 5 and the variance can be calculated by using this formula i leave it up to you to verify that when you compute this formula you can get 2.5 okay now most of the questions related to binomial distribution are associated with probabilities, calculating probabilities of various events. In this case, I considered four events. In this case, the event x is less than or equal to four, less than or equal to four, four, three, two, one, zero, satisfy this event, okay? So it is sum of four, three, two, one, zero, okay? So this is the probability, greater than seven, Greater than 7 means 7 is not included. It's 8, 9, 10. Enter. Greater than or equal to 8. Now 8 must be included because greater than or equal to 8. Enter. Less than or equal to 7, greater than 2. Equal to sum. Less than or equal to 6. So 6 is included, but 2 is not included. Okay, so in this case, I got all of these probabilities. Now, one thing that I want you to remember is this. It's very, very important in case of any discrete distribution. That boundary point, in this case, boundary point is 4, and 4 is included. Okay, so if you look at this, you can see the 4 is included, right? 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Next one, 7 is not included. 7 is excluded because it is greater than seven, boundary is not included. So here, six is included, but two is not. So six is included, but two is not. Two is excluded because it says greater than two and less than or equal to six. That's all to it. So learning, in my thesis, the learning is easy when you know the fundamentals and when you recreate those fundamentals and you learn how to apply those fundamentals. And in this case, you only need to look at these conditions, these four conditions where binomial distribution can be applied, these four conditions, okay? So in any business situations or in any questions, when you see there are a fixed number of trials, you should suspect it's a binomial distribution. And then make sure that each of the trial has only two outcomes. Make sure that the probability of each outcome is fixed. Make sure that each of the events or the cases or the trials are independent of each other. If that is the case, you can use Excel to construct the probability distribution and answer any, any probability distribution question, any probability questions related to that events. Okay? I hope you found this presentation helpful. If you need any help, please leave a comment on the YouTube and I will help you out in any way I can. Any question you have in statistics, okay? Thank you. Bye.